Yes, you do hardly any damage. Terry shouted them. Hit him with a l angry shout. Oh my goodness, goodbye, Wolfie boy. Right, well, we're going to suplex her into the ground. What the hell, Terry? What was that maneuver? That was incredible. Welcome to Skyrim, everyone's absolutely favorite game of all time, created by the most beautiful being in the entire known universe. It is, of course, Todd Howard. Now, Skyrim is absolutely everyone's favorite RPG game, but the issue is an RPG game usually means you have to level up and improve. That's right, you might start as a low-level archer or warrior, but by the end of the game you're going to be a high-level dude doing critical hits, maybe even swinging a sword that you made yourself using the smithing tree. And guess what? That's probably absolutely overpowered. Now today, ladies and gentlemen, I try and limit my power by restricting myself to beating this game at level 1. But not just level 1, because that's far too easy. Instead, I will not be gaining a single ounce of experience. This is effectively a level zero challenge. That means I can't use any weapons, any skills, or any armor. This is the true ultimate test of a Skyrim player's abilities. And so naturally we will be beating the game in the most perfectly balanced of ways with absolutely no exploits whatsoever. So let's sit back, relax, grab a nice warm cup of Yorkshire tea. If you're feeling especially fantastic, you can even like the video. And let's dive into a brand new world, an adventure in Skyrim! Ah, Bethesda Game Studios presents, ah, it's the lovely world of Skyrim. It's good to be back with a brand new character as well this time because we want to make this a true level one experience and that means no stats, no improvements whatsoever, no armor, no swords because the issue is if I were to swing a sword or even sneak, I will gain experience and that experience will make me theoretically level up. Now, a lot of level one challenges, you are just quite simply level one. You just never gain the increases in health or mana and you don't pick any perks, but you can still say hit destruction level 100, which is going to make your destruction magic more powerful. Consequently, that's illegal by my books. Now, as you can see, we start out the game at level 1 with absolutely zero experience whatsoever. We are a true slate, a tabula rasa, so to speak, and what the hell is happening with the carriage, for goodness sake? Ah, oh, Skyrim. We might be on release number 47, but that still doesn't mean the intro doesn't have a few bugs because a rabbit randomly wandered into these stars area. Anyway, let's go make ourselves a hero. Now we encounter a very complicated situation right here, which is that we need to pick a character that represents us and also allows us to maintain this level one challenge in the easiest way possible. And that means, of course, we have to play as a furry, sorry, I mean a Khajiit. There we go. Yes, a cat person. And the reasoning is very simple. In a world where we can't use any weapons, unarmed claw attacks are going to be the highest base damage weapon we can have access to. So that means we're naturally going to pick a Khajiit, so let's create our Skyrim fursona. One furry later. Now we've created him, the greatest boy of all, it's Tony the Tiger, although wait, no, hang on a second, that's a legal copyright. Okay, it's Tony the Tiger's evil twin brother, that's right, it's Terry the Tiger, ooh, he's legally distinct, unlike his brother owned by the Kellogg Company, ah, uh, he's going to be absolutely perfect, he's beautiful, he's orange, and he has of course been in many a fight with Tony when it came to the inheritance of their parents' estate. Sadly, Terry did not win and so was consequently banished to the lands of Skyrim. However, today, we shall free him of the world of Skyrim by making him the most powerful level one being in the universe. So, let's begin. All right, we're summoned up next to die. Lovely stuff, but don't worry, we're going to be saved by a dragon. Ah, lovely. Dragon X Machina has begun, and the pussycat has been freed from the confines of its limitations. All right, we have our job, and that is to quite simply escape and run very fast. So, wabam, here we go. We've made our way to safety. Now let's uh, actually leave this bloody place. All right, now naturally we're not going to join the uh, Stormcloak meme rebellion. We're going to actually side with the Imperials, as always. Not that we're going to join them, of course, because we're going to be too busy just being generally awesome. Anyway, it's time for us to actually be released from our binds. And there we go. Our hands are now unbind, and Terry the Tiger is ready to fight. Now, ready, the game wants us to pick up items, but in reality, we can't have any. No armor, no, 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 no. Because you see, this right here is light armor. If we were to wear it and be hit by anything, we'd gain experience. This is an iron sword. It's one-handed. If we were to swing it and hit anything, we would gain experience. This means we can have absolutely nothing. But guess what? We can also press tab and access magic. We could use flames. We could use healing. We could even use night eye. But no, these first two here are part of magic schools like destruction and restoration. They will provide us with experience, meaning we cannot use them. We can, however, use claws, which will do 15 points of unarmed 
unarmed damage, and as there isn't a dedicated unarmed skill tree, that means we can't gain experience for them, which is perfect. We're going to go open up this lovely doorway, and it's time for us to start fighting these uh, storm cloaks. Ouch, 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 you are very angry, but don't worry, free regular hits and anyone will go down. Oh my goodness, Terry, please, the violence. <laughs> Think of the children. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, don't worry. Khajiits in the early game are kind of ridiculously overpowered because of their ability just to punch everything. Anyway, lovely, let's continue on. All right, we can punch this Stormcloak soldier and then punch this Stormcloak soldier. And there we go. Good job. We've saved the day. Equally, I can't read pretty much any of the books lying around just in case they happen to be books that give me experience. The risk is quite simply too high. Anyway, I'm just going to uh, quite simply run through most of the tutorial area because quite frankly, we don't need to wait for Hadvar. He's simply too slow. Now, the worst part for this challenge is, of course, that pretty much everything counts as a weapon, from the mighty longbows to the axes to even the fork and knife, which can actually be obtained via very complicated methods, meaning the only weapon we can use are our fists. And also, I suppose, shouts can also count as a way to murder people, although it will just take a long while. So we need to make our character as strong as possible so that it becomes viable for us to actually beat the game. In order to do that, we need our fists and our power and what the hell just happened there. All right, now we're going to hop in the carriage and make our way all the way over to Dawnstar and then what's on down to Morphal as we've got some power to gain. So let's go on a carriage journey. And away we go. Ah, now we've made our way all the way over to Dawnstar to try and do one very important thing and that is gain money. Uh, of course, we're going to go over here to the secret exploit chest, which has never been removed and try and get ourselves some money. 750 gold is rather good and these potions of healing will do nicely. So with the chest now looted, it's time for us to go and actually get ourselves the next stone of power, which is going to buff the heck out of us. The stone in question sits around about here and it is the Lord Stone, ladies and gentlemen. Right, welcome back. I've made my way all the way of this lovely location. It's not that far from Dawnstar and it's also rather close to Morphal. This is the Lord Stone. We're resistant to both magicka and physical damage for the entirety of the duration that we have this thing equipped. As you can see, we now have two sets of 50 points of damage resistance and will resist 25% of magic. Considering we can't put on any armor, this is actually ridiculously useful. So now we've made ourselves harder to kill, all we need to do next is to make ourselves more powerful when it comes to combat. In order to do that, we're going to have to do a little bit of adventuring, but first I want to test my newfound abilities, and that's going to involve going inside this crypt. What's in here, I have absolutely no idea, but it's probably something that wants to get beaten up. Yep, there you go. Look, there's some wolves. Right, and punch, you're dead. And yes, it can do a little bit of damage to me, but it's definitely not going to win. So we've become harder to kill. Now we just need to actually make ourselves more powerful. And in order to do that, we have two ways. Way number one is to go down the route of the shouts and use shouts to defeat most of our enemies. And way number two is to improve our punchy damage. Now we're going to combine the two in order to create the most powerful creature possible. Anyway, I'll be back in a little bit. Ah, welcome back to Skyrim. Now we've made our way over to Bleak Falls Barrow because I need to go and do the tutorial quest, get the dragon stone just so that I can start learning the lovely Fusradar word of power as I believe this will be our first step on the way of true strength. Oh, hello there, angry uh, bandit boy. Yes, throat punches for you. Oh, wow. Um, we are mightily powerful. Anyway, let's go complete this tutorial quest. Well, we've made our way through Bleak Falls Barrow, so naturally uh, we need to go fight the final boss of Bleak Falls Barrow. He's just here. So we're just going to go and beat him up in his little coffin. But first, the OG word of power, Fus, and then we shall learn Fusrodar and be a true Chad. Anyway, you need to um die now, my friend. So I'm just going to have to chuck some potions in order to actually counter him. So let's chuck some stamina potions. And uh, now let us do our kitty cat claws. Yes, look at our kitty cat claws go. And kitty cat claws again. Yes, there we go. Lovely. Well, we've almost killed the overlord and he's dead. Fantastic. It really is as easy as that. Well, that's one quest complete. Now, sadly, we're very limited on the actual amount of loot we can do. For example, we can't actually open up any locked chests because that would level up our lock picking. So we're definitely under loot generally, but it's okay. We've made our way out to Skyrim and we're ready to rumble as I want to go learn how to shout like a dragon. Okay, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Some time has passed on our glorious journey. We've managed to uh, attain a maxed out Fusrodar shout, which is rather easy. And of course, done it without actually gaining a single ounce of experience. But now we're in a prime position. We need to improve our shouts. And by that, I mean we need to make sure we can cast them faster. And in order to do that, that means we have to go to Solitude because we have one very 
guaranteed item right here. And that is on the poor dude who's having his head lobbed off over to our right. That's right, he is wearing an amulet of Talos. And that bad boy is going to allow me to do some magical things. So we get to uh, lovingly watch someone get decapitated again. Fantastic, lovely stuff. But most importantly, we can search him, which is exactly what we're going to do. And on his body is an amulet of Talos. And taking this doesn't count as stealing the item. So that bad boy is now ours. Lovely stuff, job done. We have one amulet of Talos. This bad boy we can equip, it doesn't add to our armor, and it will decrease the time between shouts by 20%. Now, 20% is good, but it's not unlimited power. So when you're going to need to get a few more of these bad boys, there's just one issue. That would involve me scouring the land, buying them off of merchants, and oh my, what a faff. Instead, what we're going to do is wait until tomorrow morning, and actually, we might check out this lovely merchant here because there is a chance that they will sell an additional amulet of Talos and this will make my life just a little bit easier. Now, sadly, we haven't found any item here that particularly tickles our fancy, so I will sadly have to reset our inventory. So um, let me drop down a quick save, then whip out my fists, punch her, and then quite simply load that save in. And there we go, the trader's inventory has now just been reset. Oh, there's a ring of minor health here that would increase our health by 20 points. That one might actually be useful. I mean, 20 extra health is useful, but it is most of my gold. Ah, bugger it, why not? It's mine. Lovely stuff. All right, so we're going to go back out into solitude, and now we need to basically start mass duplicating an item or two. So now that we have the items we actually wish to duplicate, I've made my way up to Wide Run, which is my favorite location to duplicate items, with my trusty follower of Lydia. Now, we're going to start by duplicating just one of these items, the lovely Ring of Minor Health. We're just going to quite simply drop it down on the ground here and have Lydia pick it up. It really is as simple as that. So she's going to pick up the item, fantastic stuff, and then we're going to leave to Skyrim, immediately then open up the map, fast travel to somewhere else like the White Run stables, then immediately open up the map and fast travel back to White Run. And as we enter White Run, if everything has worked successfully, our lovely ring should still be down here on the floor, which it is right here, lovely stuff, the ring of minor health. But very interestingly, if we speak to Lydia right now and go into her inventory, oh my goodness, there's another ring of minor health in here. But hang on a second, I have the Ring of Minor Health. Oh dear, now there's two of them. So we're going to take the one from Lydia, and now we have two Rings of Minor Health. But this doesn't exactly help us, as you can only really wear one ring at one time. It's not like I can wear two Rings of Minor Health and just yeet my stats up stupidly high. Or is it? Anyway, I'm going to start duplicating more Rings of Minor Health and Amulets of Talos, and I'll be back in a moment once I've managed to get myself a fair few of them. Right, okay, I've been doing some duplicating, and I've managed to get up to seven Amulets of Talos and eight rings of minor health, which is absolutely fantastic. However, I need one last ring added to the collection before I will start using them to gain infinite power. And in order to get that ring, we need to come all the way down over here to Markov, which is um, very fun indeed. Oh my, wait, there's a fight going on here. Oh no, Margaret has died. Oh dear, what a crazy man. Anyway, now that we've made our way to Markov, all we need to do is make our way over to the Hall of the Dead. This is a very, very spicy location because it's going to allow us to start eating corpses, which is uh, a very tasty snack indeed. We could pick the lot to go in, but instead we're going to go borrow a key from a dude called Velus, and I'll be back in a little moment. So we come up here to this lovely evil looking uh, shrine of RK. It's um, very, very dodgy, but hey, it is here. Now, effectively, Eola is a cannibal, and uh, she's going to give us a little ring to help us with being a cannibal. Anyway, now we must clear a whole bunch of evil dead corpses from Breachcliff Cave, and we will have completed our adventure. It's going to be glorious. Ah, we did it. We've joined the cult of the best god, the one that involves eating people. Ah, this is exactly what Terry the Tiger wanted. He loves to eat them. So we have a very simple job. We have to go and speak to Verilus and bring him over here, effectively, which shouldn't be that difficult at all. So uh, let's go find him. Ah, hello there, brother. Right, I need you in my travels. Okay, so now that we have our brand new friend of brother Verilus here, we're going to take him into the dank old cave and take him over to the shrine because he's gonna love the shrine of corpse eating. Come on, brother. It's gonna be glorious. Right, in we go. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be quite the feast. We've got quite the collection of people here. My goodness, look at all of this. Are we all the eaters? Yep. Oh, this is gonna be a good feast, is it? Wow. Hello, brother Verilus. And he's gonna lay down uh, whilst we get the meal prepped. Um, oh dear. <laughs> Hello, brother Verilus. How are you doing? Feeling good, my dude? Yeah, he's he's looking good. He's um, gonna have a grand old time. Well, um, <laughs> I guess 
guess I have to carve the veal. Oh god. <laughs> oh god. Um, but uh, you're the tasty food. Mm. Okay, right now I guess I have to have the first bite. His still warm body lies before you. Uh, what do you do? Terry the tiger? You're gonna eat? I think this makes you a brand risk, my friend. But um, mm, wow. And there we go. We've just become her newest champion, which is lovely. Oh my goodness. So what does it mean now that we're her newest champion? Well, we get this really cool ring over here called the Ring of Namira. It is a 870 gold valued ring. It increases your stamina by 50 points and feeding on corpses grants you increased health and health regeneration. An extra 50 health from feasting on a corpse, which is very nice. So there we go. We've done it. So I've made my way back over to Skyrim and we're going to start the duplicating of our brand new ring, which will give us an additional plus 50 stamina for each time we have it. Right, I now have all of the items I want. I have eight rings of Namira, about eight rings of minor health improvement and seven amulets of Talos. This is rather good, but it is, of course, not perfection. No, 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 no. We need perfection. So in order to do that, we need to wear all of these items at the same time, as well as still maintaining no clothes because Terry likes the fresh air. So in order to wear all of these items at the same time, quite simply, get yourself a follower and complete the companion's questline so that you can then be turned into a werewolf. All right, so we're going to talk to Lydia and then transform into a werewolf at the same time. Okay, so there we go. We talk and then we transform and we're going to simply trade some items to her because guess what? She doesn't really mind that I'm a werewolf. So, wabam, I need to trade some things to you. Now, make sure you haven't got these items of Talos actually equipped to you and what we're going to do is quite simply transfer all of the amulets of Talos we have straight on over to Lydia. There we go. They're going to be right into her inventory. Then we're going to hold down the shift key and this allows us to equip these items directly onto ourselves. So, we're going to hold down shift and equip one of these items straight to us. Then we hold down the shift key again and just simply equip all of the items of Talos to ourselves. Job done. Now we're just going to simply back on out of this menu and stop being a werewolf. Fantastic stuff. We've now equipped seven amulets of Talos simultaneously. Let's just simply wait for ourselves to no longer be a werewolf. Well, bam, we've done it. We're wearing the amulet of Talos. If we go inside our inventory, we can see that we have seven amulets of Talos actually equipped. That's pretty good, but it's not perfect because surely that that means we've only got one amulet equipped and then six amulets standing next to it. But no, if we go into our active effects, we can actually see that no, we are actually wearing all of these amulets of Talos at the exact same time. And consequently, our shouts have been reduced by an absolutely insane percentage, allowing us to use unrelenting force at a little bit of a ridiculous speed. Because as you can see, the recharge time is now in the minus numbers, meaning we no longer need to recharge in order to do shouts. It just quite simply goes like so. We do our shout, we do another a shout and then we can just shout again. Ah, perfectly balanced. Right, Lydia, we're going to repeat this process for all of the other items that we're going to start messing about with. Right, I've now repeated this process and I'm now wearing the Amulet of Talos seven times, the Ring of Minor Health seven times, and the Ring of Namira seven times. However, sadly, due to the way the Ring of Namira's bonus actually fires, because it is a unique item with a unique effect, I'm not actually able to duplicate it infinite quantities of times, which is a shame, but basically we're only wearing one copy of it. The results of what we've done now mean that our health is higher than it's ever been before. As you can see, our health is at 240 and our stamina is at 150. We've become harder to kill and we can now shout very, very hard. Terry the tiger is more powerful than ever before. So their lovely furry friend, come say hello to your daddy, who is also known as Terry. Right, attack him. Yes, you do hardly any damage. Terry, shout at them. Hit him with a l angry shout <laughs> Oh my goodness, goodbye, Wolfie boy. Hello there, other Wolfie boy. Goodbye, other Wolfie boy. Oh my goodness, I love shouting. Anyway, the next thing we can do to improve our power is to make our fists stronger. And the only way we can do that is if we somehow manage to grab ourselves a ring to improve our unarmed damage, the odds of which are relatively low. However, there is one shop we can go to, and that is everyone's favorite lovely ring shop. Over to Solitude we go, as we're gonna start punching the shopkeepers over and over again until we manage to get our ourselves a ring to improve our physical damage. Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, here it is. Terrible Terry, he's found it. He's finally found it. It's a ring of fortify unarmed, ladies and gentlemen. I've been punching this NPC to reset their inventory for about the last two and a half hours, and finally we have ourselves a ring of fortify unarmed. This is a ring which fortifies our unarmed damage by five additional damage per hit. But I'm sure, as you know, if we can duplicate this item, get multiple multiple copies of it, and then wear multiple copies of it, we can turn our fists from being wet 
fishy slaps to instead being fists of fury, although given that I suppose we're Terry the Tiger, they'd actually be fists of the furry, but uh, you know, either way, it's fine. Anyway, I got to duplicating and I mass duplicated these rings of fortify unarmed damage, and we now have 26 of these bad boys. They are very, very, very powerful, but I need to actually make sure I can wear them all. So we're gonna go out into the wider world with Lydia and get to work putting them on so that we can transform Terrible Terry into Tyrant Terry, destroyer and consumer of worlds. Because if you can consume the taste of Frosty's the cereal, you're going to consume the taste of Terry's fist down your mouth. Unless, of course, you press the like button. That's right, you're being held hostage today by a cat inside a video game with a god complex. That's right. But I don't want to get accused of intimidation, so make sure you go into the comment section and say that you love Terry. That way everyone knows that he's just a sweet, innocent destroyer of universes who's just simply misunderstood. Right, now let's go turn him into a god. Okay, now we're going to transform Terry into being a god. So in order to do that, we have to take off all of the items that we're wearing pretty much beyond our backpack. And now we're going to talk and transform to Lydia at the same time. And there we go. We nail the process here. We quite simply wait for ourselves to transform. And then we're going to say, hey, Lydia, I need to trade some things with you. So we're bam, we're going to start by giving her all of our amulets of Talos, all of our fortify unarmed rings, all of our rings of minor health, and also one of our rings of Nymeria. Now all we need to do is quite simply take one of these rings and wear it by holding down shift and we'll do the same for the fortify unarmed ring. And we're going to need to manually select this for each and every individual one. It's going to take a little bit to do but once we've managed to do it we're going to have a huge amount of power behind us. So it's going to be well worth it. And there we go I've taken pretty much one of every item. I'm going to leave Lydia with one ring of minor health, one fortify unarmed ring and also the rest of the rings of Namira that we can't actually use. So we're just going to back on out to this menu and wait for a single hour. Now we're going to transform back into human form and hopefully we're going to be wearing a whole bunch of rings. Now as we manage to duplicate 26 rings of unarmed damage and Lydia has one of them that means we have 25 rings that we are wearing that grant us an increase in 5 unarmed damage each. This is an increase in unarmed damage of 125 bringing our total unarmed damage up to about 150 which as you can imagine is much higher than any normal weapon in Skyrim. So now that we have the ability to punch a lot of things into the Shadow Realm it's probably time that we actually give it a go. Now I suppose one way in which I can test Terry's brand new power is on uh, these Falmor which are illegally imprisoning members of Nord society. Oh well they really don't like me. I'm gonna say hey what are you doing? They're taking someone to be interrogated. <sighs> How can they? They've banned Talos and they could do whatever they like. They can't do that. Only Terry could do that. Right well we're going to suplex her into the ground. What the hell Terry? What was that maneuver? That was incredible. Right let's kill that one and let's also kill this one. Wabam. We freed you Falmor prisoner. Actually I want to free you in the truest way possible. I'm going to free you from your mortal form so um goodbye human. <laughs> oh my god this is amazing. Terry never change. Anyway we're gonna go kill a dragon priest because one hides over there. Anyway we've made it to this uh dragon burial site where there is quite literally a live dragon and also a dragon priest so first let us murder this dragon. Hello there dragony friend. Now luckily for you I have shouts and unluckily for you my shouts don't need any time to recharge so I can just do a foot row and I can punch you. Yes, take this, dragony boy. Oh, yes. Oh, and you're dead. Well, um, that was a fun challenge. Thank you for your gold, and I hope you enjoy evaporating. Anyway, let's go kill a dragon priest that resides inside this coffin. Hello there, Croesus. You look big and scary. Anyway, I'm just going to wail on you for a bit. And you know what? I can just perpetually stunlock you whilst Lydia cleans up shop, or I can just punch you myself. Anyway, I will punch you, and you're dead. There we go. That's Croesus dealt with. He's a pretty cool dude. He's got a fun mask. We can't wear it, of course, because it's light armor, but it's ours now. Anyway, that was an absolute walk in the park. Barely an inconvenience, in fact. Oh my goodness,
this. Check it out. There's giants. Oh, real life giants. Hello there. You look so grumpy and angry. Anyway, I need to uh, punch you a bit, my friend. And oh my goodness, you can hit hard. Well, I suppose I can also hit hard and so can you. So we kind of balance each other out. You appear to have lost your weapon there, giant friend. Which of course sucks to be you because I have fists of fury. Look at my cat form go. And you're dead. Ah, oh, thank you, lovely giants, for proving to be an interesting adversary. Interesting, of course, in the fact that you do also still die to my immense power and glory. Oh, check it out. It's another dragon. Cool. I wonder if he wants to be my friend. Nope, he chooses violence. They always choose violence. It's not Terry's fault that everyone chooses violence first. So there we go. We'll just unlock him, then hit him with a fist of fury, then another fist of fury, and then just, you know, another fist of fury. Free knocks and you're out, dragony friend. Thanks for your money. Okay, well, this is where the dragon we killed came from, so, um, we can just steal his word power. Okay, we've learned how to do frost breath. Lovely. Uh, it has a minus 12 recharge time, which means we can do it, and then we can do it again, and then we can do it again. Well, we now have a ranged attack, so that's good. Oh, and there's a mammoth to test out our new powers on. Frosty attack is looking good. Uh, it does have the ability to knock over wolves. They don't seem to like it. We're just gonna start frosting up this mammoth to see, um, how slow we can make him. Anyway, he's quite slow now. We can kind of just walk backwards whilst repeatedly chilling him. Oh my goodness, he can hit us, but that's okay. Oh, his dad's on the way, uh, so we can just slow him down. Anyway, let's punch the mammoth a bit, and, uh, the mammoth is dead. His giant friend is, uh, very angry, and Terry is now also dead. I suppose that is the problem with building Terry to effectively be a glass cannon. The boy cannot take a hit, but that's okay, because we still love him. Everyone still loves Terry. He might not be his brother, but he's still impressive, amazing, powerful, and an oddly attractive father figure in his own little way. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This has been the adventures of Terry on his quest to prove that, yes, at level one, without gaining any experience, you can beat Skyrim, provided you're, of course, willing to exploit the hell out of the game. Dragon, please, I'm trying to have a moment. You're ruining my immersiveness, Dragon. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, if you've enjoyed watching today's video, then make sure to give it a like, and why not consider subscribing to see more amazing, fantastical, and interesting video game exploits, which allow us to have more fun than any developer ever expected. As always, a massive thank you to all of our amazing YouTube members whose fancy badges you might see down in the comment section, and also all of our glorious Patreons shown on screen now. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. You make all of this very possible. And hey, if you sat there wondering what to watch next, look no further than this video on screen now, hand chosen by myself to be absolutely perfect for you. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have a lovely day, and goodbye for now.